So in this little photography vlog, I'm taking the A93 out for a spin to try and see how it performs for bird photography. And I was extra excited to try out the 120 FPS burst mode to get it with the pre-capture. So that is exactly what I'm doing today. So grab some snacks and uh, enjoy this little winter photography vlog. Let's go. This is the bird I'm after. I have a very good feeling about this because the light is just gorgeous. Let's try to find some birds. Oh. And thanks to Sony for lending me this camera. This is not a sponsor video. I asked if I could like borrow it for a couple of days and uh, they had a little little time frame where nobody was going to borrow it. So I I'm very grateful for that. So thank you Sony. I'm all alone here. So one of the absolute coolest features in my opinion about the A93 is the possibility to have continue shooting in up to 120 fps you can shoot it in raw i have sd cards with me i think i have at least half a terabyte so 500 gigs with me but i honestly don't want to <laughs> to feel that because it's a pain to uh, to transfer that into the computer and then you have to sort out the photos and yeah so <laughs> i'm gonna think before shooting there's a blackbird And that was 160 photos. <sighs> okay, I need to... <laughs> I'm not gonna use that for a sitting bird, obviously. <laughs> like, <laughs> look at the, the buffering. <laughs> Just counting. It's absolutely insane. But uh, I can hear a lot of birds and uh, this will be good. This is a very crowded place usually, so the birds should be pretty used to people going around with large cameras. That's good. They have a bird feeding station here. Could be why there's a lot of birds here because it's minus 10 outside, so. Okay, I wanna buy this camera. That took one second and I got this. Like, look at the amount of frames in this photo. So as I've talked about earlier in my videos, that 200 to 600 is in a fantastic lens, but for birds in flight, especially small birds, you need to have a very high shutter speed. So my settings right now are one over 2,500 in the shutter speed and uh, f6.3 because that's the lowest at 600 and then my IS, ISO is at 4,000 and I wish I could lower the ISO honestly I could if there would be like it would be in the sun but this is in the shade and yeah so that that is the downside with with a lens like this like flying small birds is a pretty hard task to get get good but again 4000 ISO with today's denoising softwares it's not really a problem to be honest so and that was 85 photos <laughs> So I don't know if you saw that, but I pressed the shutter too late. I, sh I photographed when the bird already was in the air flying away. But this camera has something called pre-capture and <laughs> it's almost, it feels like I'm cheating to be honest. So pre-capture is that it's, the camera is taking photos behind the scenes all the time when you're pressing either the AF1 button or half pressing the shutter. You kind of get back in time and it captures the moment before you press the shutter. So I have it set to half a second. So it it starts bursting photos half a second before I shoot 
or I press the shutter. And <laughs> you can have to have up to one second. It gets honestly so easy. Well, I need to get moving. Try to get the, the bearded reedling. And uh, I'm so cold by sitting still. I'll definitely get back to this feeding station in a while. So I have photographed the bearded reedling once. It was actually at this exact spot. So uh, there's another photographer that I've met before. He is also trying to get the bearded reedling. I guess I'm just gonna spend some time and wait because that's that's how it is. <laughs> that is one frozen beaver. Looks pretty cold. So we are at the red dot, I guess. <laughs> Maybe we should go out here. There's a little bird again. There's a lot of snow where we're about to go, so let's get ready to get sweaty. Can't we just take a moment to appreciate this thing? It's just the one who did that a couple of hundred years ago, I guess. It's just so smart. <laughs> it's very simple, but yeah. Let's appreciate that for a moment. So something I've noticed myself, I have to remind myself of <laughs> using this. Or I have to get used to it because as you can see this dial is where you can change the drive mode which I've on all my other cameras changed on like inside of the camera and so I've set it to the little star as you can see right there that means you can change it like in the camera as usual but uh, I really like the, the hardware thing of having physical buttons for changing stuff on the, the camera. It makes the camera feel more like a workhorse than rather than like a smartphone. I just have to remind myself to actually use it. So, uh, and a feature like that, I guess if you own this camera and you use it every day, you get used to those things. But, and I have it for a week, so <laughs> I haven't really had time to, to get used to, to all of these buttons and so on, but uh, to really get them in, into my workflow. But I can imagine when you do, it's, very powerful. <laughs> so about the 120 FPS burst shooting and pre-capture feature, I've heard some people say that it's kind of shitting and I, I, I can see where it's coming from because honestly it feels like you're cheating when using the, this feature again. Is it cheating? I don't think so because the target customers of this camera isn't the hobbyist bird photographer that's going to Torkin and shooting photos for fun. 
And obviously there are amateur photographers that, that can afford this camera and buys it just for fun. And <laughs> congratulations to you, that's, that's amazing. So I think the target customer for this camera is first professional sports photographers and then professional wildlife photographers and also portrait photographers because of the, the flashing speeds and so on. And to those people, when they get paid by their client, maybe a, I don't know how that world works, but maybe a sports magazine somehow, you, you're paid to capture a moment. The client doesn't really care how you capture the moment. They just want you to capture the moment. Then this becomes a very great tool to, to do the job. So that's why I don't see it as cheating because it's, it's a great tool. What I think is cheating, however, is generating a bearded reedling in one of these reeds and getting home saying that, oh, I saw a bearded reedling and this is the shot. That is cheating to me. And that, that's honestly a whole nother story about art history and generative AI stuff. But yeah, we're not gonna take that here. You get the point. I think it's a fantastic tool. So I didn't hear a single bird on my one and a half hour trip that way. So I'm just gonna spend some time at this feeding station. I switched to the 70 to 200 2.8 to be able to have faster shutter speeds and lower the ISO so I can get really sharp photos, hopefully. We're gonna give this a try. There's a lot of birds here, so that's nice. I dropped my A7 IV in the snow. <laughs> ah, not good. That's why you should always lock the, the door on your camera bag. Stupid of me. So this spot is great for seeing a lot of small birds, but it's not that great for photography because like <laughs> the food is in the shot all, all the time. I don't think I will get the best like, photos in terms of light and composition, but it's a great way of trying out the, the burst mode. <laughs> okay, so look how fast it's going. I'm pressing three, two, one, go. Looks like one click. There's a hundred photos. So I, I decided to move a little bit further to the side and the angle is so much better. So I'm just gonna sit here and wait and uh, hopefully catch them. It's already activity, so that's nice. autofocus on this camera is by far the best I've ever tried. It's um, incredibly fast and it's like photographing small birds flying towards the camera is probably one of the hardest tasks for autofocus to do and this does it very well and it's very impressive. The light is starting to come through behind. This looks stunning. Wow. This is the best angle I can have on this location now. And I'm sitting right here with the A9. <laughs> I want the wings to be backlit when it's flying and we can have a little chance of that right now.
So the magical light is already gone. It was here for a minute or two, so you need to be quick and be ready. And luckily I was. Downside of having 120 photos a second is when you like just want to take a still photo and you forgot to change back to like single shot or a lower burst speed this is what you end up with this is 80 photos of a bird sitting still and it's just not even a whole second of what actually happened so uh, <laughs> i wish there was somehow if it was possible like to extract one of these photos from the group and then you can like delete the whole group. But I do want to keep one of these photos, so I wonder if there's a way to do this. Maybe like kinda if we lock this photo. Let's try if it works. Like secure it. And then deleting this group. What happens? That actually worked. Well, there's a solution for it. That's perfect. Nice. Look at my water. It's ice. Don't judge me for the <laughs> the choice of a water bottle. Another cool thing on the A93 is this new C5 button, as you can see right here. It's very easy accessible, just with your fingers when you're holding it. And this button is by default made for a speed boost in the drive mode. So when holding this, you can uh, you basically get 120 photos a second. When you release it, you get back to the, the drive mode that you've chosen, which is very smart. Uh, personally, I set it up in another way. So, so the way I prefer to have it is that I, I, like to, I toggle between low, high and high plus uh, on this because I'm sitting in very long periods of time, many times hand holding a lens like this, then I don't have the, the strength to hold another button all the time uh, it's just personal preference but I I thought that way worked really well for me so I'm gonna share my final like thoughts after this day of using the camera and uh, I will talk about the camera a lot more in a separate review video so the plan today was to just use the camera and I thought why not take you guys with me and uh, make a video out of it so that's what you've been seeing now I have no idea what it turn out to be it feels like I've only been walking and photographing by the the feeding station so for your information I've been taking 4400 photos today 4400 photos by this feeding station <laughs> so uh, until next time bye